Thank you. So, <laughs> so kind. You ready? Yep. It's always fun to sing the song when no one's in here yet. Because we can, I can sing with you. You're not going to sing. Nobody goes back to the beginning. Yes, they do. I think they do. So I should stop saying that. Yes. You ready? Welcome in, welcome in to We Gonna Figure It Out. Huh. There we go. What's up, Brian? And we're... I'm Brittany. Jay. We're here and... Cousin not, Teresa. We're here to give you an update on our move. We're going to start back to doing We Gonna Figure It Out on a more consistent basis with subject matter and things of that nature. But as you could imagine, we are kind of occupied at the time. So, um... We're definitely going to continue to do it, but for right now, it's just all about giving you quick updates because we know everyone's been praying for us. Everyone's been kind of rooting us on in this, uh, this faith move, and so we just want to give you a few quick testimonies and updates. Uh, we are currently, if you hear an echo, uh, it's because we're currently in our apartment, or our house, our townhouse. Yes. In Vancouver, Washington, which is a suburb of Portland. So we're still in the Portland area. Uh, it's sort of like for everybody back in Tulsa, it's like moving a broken arrow instead of moving directly, you know, into the into heart of the city, city. Right. which was to some degree a little bit of a disappointment for a second, not disappointment, but it was sort of like one of those things where it's like, should we be in the middle of the city, in the middle of things? And we both got different experiences with it. I, I would say with mine, after spending time in the city this week, um, I am absolutely excited that we are in a suburb. And that's that's weird coming from me because, you know, I can't stand suburbs. No, Andrew but, does not like suburbs. Uh, but I am absolutely excited to be in the suburb of Vancouver. Uh, I, I, I view it, it's its own city, but I view it as a suburb, though, because it's just like you just get on the highway and you go right down there to the gym. I mean, uh, to, the, uh, to Portland, and it's just yes. 10 minutes away. It's like so. 10 minutes away, so... Um, so for me, I am, ex I'm excited about it because there's so much work in Portland that needs to be done and so many different things that, uh, I've seen that I'm excited to try to get my hands in. And so to be able to come back here and kind of have a place that's separate, yes. uh, it'd be a change of pace. Cause I used to live up the street from the mission. Right. And so sort of like you never had time to decompress. Now I'll be able to have that time. What about you? How do you feel about it? Else land in here. So I'm excited about the move. I'm glad that we're in a place. The kids got some of the features that they wanted. Like Braden always wanted to live in a house that was two stories. So this town home has upstairs and the kids are upstairs. We're downstairs. Hey Sherry. Hey Lethe. Um and so they got some of those features. I like the fact that it's bigger than the place that we just lived in. Um it's quiet. But so here's here's the thing for me. Here's some things that you should know about, you know, Portland and Vancouver area. We haven't seen any mosquitoes. There are no mosquitoes. <laughs> it's the little things. It's the little things. There are no mosquitoes there. There have to be mosquitoes. No... They're just not where we are in the city. Well, we went we we've been in Portland and in Vancouver and there are no mosquitoes. I haven't gotten bit by anything. Um the weather is nice. Like yesterday we were wearing like long sleeves and jackets and stuff because it was kind of chilly. Um, there's no air conditioning. Yes, that that's something we're going to have to get used to because like right now <laughs> it's like people like, I, I, you know, people are saying it's hot right now here. It's like 85, 90 degrees at the most. And so not have, I mean, this is like a newer, newer built. I mean, like this place was only built in 2005 and they did not build it with air conditioning. No, none of the places. Like newer built, newer places with no air conditioning. It's just weird. Like, yeah. and people have fans, you know, and that's it. Yeah. That's kind of a. And I think they went through like a heat wave, something that hardly ever happens. And so they ended up having, people ended up having to buy like portable air conditioners and stuff like that to, to cool off. But the houses that they make, these brand new houses, they do not equip them with like central heat and air. I mean, they have central heat, but no central air. So yeah. that's kind of odd. But so what God's been in the middle of all of what we've done, as you guys already know, you've been praying for us and 
and helping us through this process. And so we've gotten a chance to meet multiple people who, um, who've had, you know, we've got a chance to share our story with that was excited to, to meet us. Uh, the person that signed, we signed our lease with was absolutely excited. Excited. Um, I mean, she shared her story with us and it was crazy because she, you know, when, when you tell someone, well, God sent me here, she kind of, she, she got really excited. And then she told us what God told her to do, which was kind of nothing compared to what we're doing. God told her to walk from Canada to Mexico and to raise awareness for uh, Homelessness. homelessness. And she did that. And she had some amazing stories to share with us. And now her. she gets to write a book about it. Yeah, so we're She's excited really cool. to be involved with her. Um, since we've been here, we've had multiple people offer uh, to come over and help us, you know, unpack when the pod will, you know, it'll get here to uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. So we're excited about a lot. Like, you know, there's an Uber driver we ran into. Uh, yeah. You know, he was telling us all the things. We hadn't even mentioned anything about like the headline of that story that said moving to the whitest city in America. But that was like the first thing he, he said, said to us, like yeah. was that, yay, you're here in the whitest city of, in America. And what's really odd is it's no different than to me. Right. I didn't get a whole lot of difference between where we were and here because everywhere you go, you still see African-Americans or people of other colors. Right. Uh, but there's a different vibe as to what they mean by that. And I'm starting to pick up on that, yeah. which is, we can get into on, on a different uh, level. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, we, we are excited. We've met a lot of different, you know, we've met a lot. I just met our neighbor. He seems like an, a pretty nice guy. And so mm-hmm. we're going to have fun here. The kids are enrolled in school. Yes. And that's, that's a prayer point for everyone because there's always going to be nerves and there's always going to be a lot of different things that come into play when it comes to going into a new venture. And so we are really, really, really have to be prayerful about that. We have to understand it. Our, this faith move was a faith move on all of our parts, yeah. all of our children. Uh, our two oldest daughters started school today in, uh, back in Irving. But, you know, for them to come here and kind of see where the family is going to be now and then have to go right, you know, go back to school right away. Yeah. It kind of left them, you know, with, with a certain feeling a certain kind of way. And and then with um, with our oldest son, he, you know, the, he's going into his junior year and he's leaving one of the better schools in the country in yeah. Booker T. Washington. And it's something about Booker T. where, you know, once a hornet, always a hornet. And that stays with you. And so emotionally, it's really important for you to you know, for you guys to help us and pray for him uh, as he kind of makes this transition. Uh, today, we walked into the school for the first time, and that was that was kind of a bigger thing yeah. uh, for me. I'm not even going to put, you know, I don't know how, I'm not saying how he feels about it, but for me, it was kind of a, an odd thing just walking in there and understanding the magnitude of it. So, we're all journeying into new things. Brayden, uh, you know, he, he's going to be starting a new school, and all this is coming up. So, Kids are enrolled. Tomorrow we're going to go get new IDs, which would be weird. And yeah. then get a different tag on the car, which would be odd. But we're <laughs> we're here. And like I said, it's just outside of Portland. So nothing changed. The game plan didn't change. God is still in the middle of everything. And he's still good. So, And we're having fun. Um, we look forward to the pod coming. I know that. Yeah, we need our stuff. Yeah, sitting on the floor to, doing we, uh, to do this in, in the funnest thing. But... Overall, um, that's kind of the update to give. Is there anything else you want to? Um, I'm going to be posting a lot of pictures from week one. Um, I just hadn't had a chance to really sit down and put it together the way I wanted to. So I'm going to post a lot of pictures from week one when the girls were here. And then um, just some of the places that we visited, some of the things that we've seen. And uh, I'll do that probably tomorrow, maybe tonight, tomorrow. But all is well. I mean, you know, things are going so well that it kind of is a little bit scary. So I've just been really just praying, praying, praying a whole lot. I've been praying for everybody back in Tulsa. I've been praying, you know, for the kids that just started school in Tulsa. I've been praying for our community here, just, you know, the city of Portland, city of Vancouver, you know, Adrian and Janae. 
just 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 spending a lot of time in prayer and so if y'all would you know just keep us lifted um we're praying for you guys as well and i, I would say that if if um one thing for certain is we miss you guys. And if you want to reach out, please do. Yeah. Because I think that's one of the things that can be the most uplifting things is in those moments when someone sends you a little message or an update on what's going on with them. Like, because we don't drop out. We're not dropping out of your life in any way, shape, or right. fashion. And so for uh, we want to continue our journey with you. I got a text message from uh, someone at church yesterday. And I, I hate that I didn't get a chance to get back to him like right in time. But when Andrew sent me the message, it was great because it was just like, okay, I'm not dismissed from his life. You know, it ain't yeah. out of sight, out of mind. It right. was good to be able to, to still be a part. And so that's going to be, uh, you know, a fantastic thing for you guys to do. It's just every now and then just check in, <laughs> just making phone calls. And for us, the time adjustment to we going to figure yes. it out and all the other things that we want to do, we realize that the day goes by so fast. Because there were multiple, like last week we said we we're going to, we showed you on Sunday that we had made it. And I said, we're going to do a show on Monday. And I look up and we were still doing stuff. And I realized it was like nine o'clock in Tulsa. And yeah. we couldn't do it. We we're going to figure it out because it was too late. Yes. So, so I think. So trying to figure out the time frame is a little different because like I wanted to get up and talk to my kids before they went to school this morning. And. You yeah, know, they were at school. They were at school, yeah. and we woke at up and it was five. <laughs> they went to school at five <laughs> I'm like, a.m. Oh gosh, I missed it. I missed so. it. So, so figuring out the time frame of when the best time is to reach out to everybody back home and you know talk to the kids and, and things like that has kind of been an adjustment. But we gonna figure yeah. it out. So <laughs> one last thing, I, I kind of wanted to to ask you guys to as far as an update, and I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but. You know, one of the things that happens when you move and you, you make sudden changes, you kind of leave behind certain habits. And even though God prepared me thoroughly and my family thoroughly for this move, there's some things that, you know, God could tell you, hey, A, B, C, and D is going to happen. You'd be like, well, A, B, E, and D seems important. And you might leave out C. And for me, we've done our best to try to eat healthy and eat right and do everything we're supposed to do. But over the last three months, um, I think... Today I woke up and rec recognized that I have to get back into a basic routine. Not a basic, but a routine of taking care of myself every single day. Yeah. And to, you know, um, still enjoy life, but exercise consistently. So uh, a little bit more consistently. So I need to find a gym. And I purposely wore this shirt today that you got for me. It says, uh, wake up, pray, pray and, and live. live. And, and that came from Kelly Elaine. Kelly so, E. Lane. So I, I purposely wore that today just to say, to tell myself, okay, I got to get back into that routine of doing just that so that I can live long and do the things God told me to do. Right. And it's possible to get back into uh, good health. So please be praying for us in that area. That I we honestly think I've routines. lost some weight. Some of my clothes are fitting a little bit different. Um, but we did a lot of walking the first week. Um, I want to keep that going. But I, I think I... I haven't weighed myself or anything like that, but just the way my clothes are fitted, I actually feel like I've dropped maybe, a, you know, two to three, maybe four pounds and maybe some inches or something like that. But um, definitely a lot more to do here to be active and things like yeah. that. And I so, can't wait to the pod gets here. Our bikes are on the pod. And yeah. everyone bikes here. Everyone it's so bikes. weird. Not, I mean, like biking, ride, driving next to bikers is the oddest yeah. thing. Yeah. So we're going to wrap it up. But I did want to share something. I say this, I used to say this verse to my men all the time, like every single day. And it kind of, I realized for years of saying, talking out of uh, Mark chapter nine, it, today was one of those days where it hit me bigger than anything it says. And verse 23, nine and verse 23 says, if you can, Jesus said, everything is possible for one who believes. <laughs> and honestly, for me, it kind of just boils down to, you going to return to the back home? So no. it kind of boils down to, <laughs> to for me, <laughs> that if you believe anything is possible and you have those pinch yourself moments when I look outside and it's mountains and like yes. all around us, you know, like there's the mountain line. I mean, like you can see the mountains and you could see like in the air is just different. You could breathe we it in. Too, and so it's just kind of like if you believe all things is possible, you can change your life. You can change things and God 
can really elevate you to a whole nother level according to his will and his plan. If you believe it's possible. Yeah. So whatever mess you may be in, no matter what life is going, you know, how your life is going, just believe in that better day that God has for you. Don't believe the hype that you got to stay stuck where you are. Because honestly, whether it's going good or not, if you really truly believe that there's another glory and another level, I promise you, you know, it makes it a whole lot easier just to have that belief. And I'm just excited about what God is about to do. Yes. But I, on the same token, I'm in awe of what he has done. Yes, it's amazing. So we it's love amazing. you guys. We absolutely love y'all. We love y'all. And miss you. And like I said, just stay in touch with us. And that's the best way, you know, for you to make sure we, we doing all right and us to make sure you're doing all right. Yep. That's good. That's good. All right. It's not dinner time for us yet, so we're about to go figure out what we're going to eat. I hope y'all having Perfect. something good for dinner. We tried to get on here at the time that we would be on in Tulsa, so hopefully that works out for y'all. We don't know how long that'll last. We'll try to <laughs> <laughs> continue with that, Rochelle. <laughs> but we love y'all. And there's Brayden. We found a barber. Yes, we found several hey. barber shops down. Martin Luther King. Yes. <laughs> Every city has one. Yes, it does. It is the it's the African American area of town. Indeed. So, all right.